as you can tell by the title of this video, it's just gonna be a little bit deep. <laughs> That's the right word for it. Um, a little more serious than my, you know, Shipley's Donuts videos or trying on makeup or doing anything like that. What I really wanted to do for this video, which I had in mind for a really long time, was to talk about my journey with grief and what I've been going through and how I've overcome it. Not that I've I'm done by any means of the fact, but I'm making my way through it. I just kind of wanted to give y'all a little insight into my life and share what I've learned with grief. Over two years ago, my dad passed away. My dad was literally my best friend. I was the epitome of a daddy's little girl and losing him was, is the hardest thing I think I've ever gone through in my entire life. I never thought that it would affect me so much. And throughout my entire life, my dad always suffered from different health issues. So he would get sick, he would go to the hospital, but luckily he would get better. One time he did it though. And I had thought through all of those times that he went into the hospital or got sick that I was somehow slowly preparing myself for the inevitable and that day finally came. I had never felt so empty, so lost, so broken in my entire life, yet felt like I had so many emotions all tied up into it at the same time. What I came to realize now is that's grief. That's how it feels to lose a loved one and it's probably the worst pain you will ever feel in your entire life. Over the last two and a half years, I have been sort of suppressing my grief, if that makes any sense. I didn't want to talk about it, I didn't want to do anything, I didn't want people to see that I was upset because, as you can tell from my YouTube videos, I just try to do fun and happy things and not really let people see the deeper, more sensitive side of me. I just wanted to share with y'all in case you're going through something similar or if you can take a little tidbit of this for maybe someone you know who's going through this and you can help them. I want everyone to know that they're not alone and I think that's a big key in it. So here are my five things that I learned from grief. The first one is you can't prepare for it. I know I mentioned prior that all I did was think about my dad passing and how that was going to affect me and everything. I knew that was what was going to happen. But I remember a conversation I had with one of my friends about three weeks after my dad passed and he just found out that his dad had cancer and my reality seemed to hit close to home to him. And when I talked to him about it, I had told him that I thought I was preparing for this moment for my entire life. And the truth of the matter was, you don't know until you're in it. And nobody will know or nobody will understand unless they've gone through it or are close to it or really feel it from someone that they love. You don't just move on, it becomes you. Your grief will be there with you for the rest of your life, but you learn how to manage it. And I think that's the key to it all. At the beginning of my journey, I didn't want to manage it. I tried, I went to some counseling sessions, but I thought I could do it on my own. I'm strong, I'm an independent woman, I can do it all. And that's just not the case. And it takes time, it takes healing, it takes talking about it, it takes working towards it to be able to know how to manage it. Going into my second point, you have to talk about what you're feeling. And I didn't. I didn't talk to anyone about it for a very long time. I mentioned maybe side remarks or comments or I tried to do the whole like make a joke out of it because I don't want people to see how I'm truly feeling, which in hindsight made things worse for me. I was diagnosed with depression and PTSD, and those are two things that I never thought I would ever have in my entire life. But it's because I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about my feelings. I didn't talk about what was going on in my head. 
I didn't feel the need to let my feelings show. That was probably the hardest thing in my journey. When I finally got to the point where I felt like I needed to tell someone what I was actually thinking and feeling and hurting and my loved ones were there to support me. My husband even tried to help me find a therapist. My therapist is an amazing woman and she has helped me leaps and bounds from where I was at. I don't think I could have made this video without her help in getting me to where I am today because I couldn't talk about how I was feeling openly. It either crushed me or I felt like I just had to make jokes of it. And it's not a matter to joke about. It's a matter that we all need to take seriously and we all need to be more sensitive to what these individuals are going through. We live in a society where our bereavement period is defined as like a two to three day maximum allotment of time that you don't have to do anything, but really you are doing something because you're planning a funeral, you're grieving the person you just lost. And I think maybe that had something to do with it. The fact that I was told I need to go back to work and just try to get back to my life. I thought, well, I shouldn't talk about my feelings because nobody wants to hear that. They just want to see that I've moved on. And that's not the case. Nobody wants me to just move on. People want me to actually be better. The third thing I learned about grief is that even though you feel alone, you're not. I didn't realize this for the longest time. One of my best friends lost her dad also about a month or two before I lost mine. And I was lucky to have someone that kind of understood, but I was still in the mindset that I was alone. I'm an only child. I, again, I was the epitome of a daddy's little girl and my dad just died. What am I going to do with my life? In my mind, nobody understood what I was going through and nobody would ever understood what I was going through. Although that's not the case. Once I started seeing my therapist, she opened a door of resources to me and there were blogs and podcasts and Instagram accounts that I just dove right into. I started following all of these Instagram accounts, so they were just all over my feed and I read all of these blog posts and it just gave me such a good insight into, wow, other people are feeling these things too. I'm not alone. I can find support through these people that I don't even know. To me, it's amazing what the power of feeling seen and heard can do because the moment I started reading these blog posts and articles, I immediately started seeing the light almost. Like, okay, I can get better. These people have felt just as bad as I do right now. And what they're explaining is exactly what I'm feeling. So I'm not crazy. I'm not feeling feelings that I shouldn't be feeling. I'm not feeling things that or bad or wrong or whatever it is, it's okay. This is grief. This is what it does to people. I think if you've lost someone recently, I highly recommend looking into these blogs. I'll link them down below. You aren't alone. You are heard and what you're feeling is normal and it's okay. So my fourth point of what I've learned is that you can continue to live by what your loved one taught you while they were around. One of the first sessions I had with my therapist, she asked me to write down things that my dad used to say to me or things that my dad taught me that I want to continue to live by. And every day, I think to those, honestly. Things my dad taught me were to not give up even when all seems to be working against you, keep trying. Don't take your loved ones for granted and live life to the fullest and make sure every experience counts. 
I can't tell you how often I think about those things now and think I need to make sure that I'm being a better friend, a better daughter, a better wife, a better dog mom, whatever it may be, because I want to be remembered the way that my dad was remembered and the fact that he would do anything for the people that he loved. He would drop everything on a dime just to help someone that he really cared about. And I wanna be remembered that way. I want to be looked at as someone that really is in the moment and wants to live my life to the fullest and just experience everything that the world has to offer. And I want other people to experience it with me too. And I want people to know that I will always try but I'm always going to give it my best effort no matter what it is. And I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna keep trying. And that one was the one that resonated with me the most because I'm going to fight this. I'm going to fight through this grief. I'm gonna fight through this depression and PTSD and whatever it else that I have. And I'm gonna get through this because there's more. And so that being said, my final one is it's okay to have bad days. I think looking back onto the don't give up aspect of what my dad taught me, this goes hand in hand with it. And also what my therapist has told me in the past of, there's gonna be ups and downs still, but we're gonna make them go from high peaks and valleys and mountains and whatever <laughs> to more of just like hills and not so much of the up and down roller coaster ride that I felt like I was on for a very long time. It's going to become manageable. And if I have a day where I'm not feeling good or I'm sad or whatever it might be, it's okay to feel that. I've always been a little ashamed to let people see that side of me. But in understanding what I've been through and what other people have probably gone through that are similar to me, those days are gonna happen and my friends and family will understand that those days will happen and will support me through it. I hope that what I've said today helps you in any which way that you need to. I understand what you're going through if you've lost someone who is a loved one. I understand if you're a friend who's lost someone that's a loved one. It's hard. And that's all I can say about it is it's difficult. It's extremely difficult. But what gets us through it is our support system and finding the things that we need and knowing that we can get out on the other side. It's going to be okay. And for the longest time, I didn't think it was. But over the past few months, I would say things are different. Things are looking up and I couldn't be more thankful for my support system and everything that they've done for me. If there's anything that I can do to help you in your grief journey or whether it be depression or PTSD, I'm by no means a therapist, but I can give you information that my therapist has given me that I really thought helped. And so feel free to message me on Instagram if you want to. So with all that said, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I know it's probably not the normal video that you were anticipating from me, but I really just needed to get this off my chest and put it out there into the world to know that everyone's not alone. We're all going through something together. And even if the individual doesn't look like they're hurting or sad or whatever it is, reach out to those people because maybe they are and they're just putting on a front like what I was doing. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more normal content in comparison to what this is, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, leave comments below and I will see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.